Hey, what's up you guys? So, as you guys may already know, I am in the process of getting my Florida Realtor license. I already have California Realtor license and uh, while I was doing the final exam, almost failed half of the questions, which is weird because I've been a realtor here in California for, I want to say, more than a year now. Besides that, the California exam is three times longer and you have to study for three times bigger material here in California in order to pass the exam. So I decided to make a short video on the specific questions that were a little different from California or those I didn't know being a California realtor and I'll share them with you guys today. So if you're preparing for the Florida realtor exam, this would be probably the hardest ones that I will go through in this short video. But one of those questions was which characteristics of value and component would cause cause the lender to refuse to make a new loan for a buyer. Now, I there were like a couple options. I chose demand. There are too many other properties like this one, which you would think is right. But uh, the thing is, it was wrong. I mean, personally, I haven't seen something like that. I mean, most of the time, if the lender was refused, it was going to be because of property. Uh, most of the time, it's undervalued or it would ask a credit price. If the lender would know that it would not appraise, he probably would not just go with it. But the right answer was transferability. The title is not marketable. So if a seller cannot provide a marketable title, the lender will likely refuse the loan. I mean, obviously, but again, this would not be intuitive answer. Another question was a homestead exemption in Florida is available for those who qualify file documents, making the Florida home primary residence. The base homestead exception is I choose 50,000 because I was under the impression that it was 50,000. However, it was 25. So pretty much, this is something just to memorize. Now, this one was one of the tricky questions which I answered correctly. The Civil Rights Act of 1988, two important benefits of the housing discrimination, they can be described as. And the correct answer, this is just something to memorize, guys. More protected classes than the 1968 Act and greater punishment for violators. Obviously, it also could be intuitive because more and more legislation just put more and more uh, pressure to the uh, constituents. I mean, to, to everyone else who are in the industry. Next question: I did select the wrong answer on this one. Which statement is true regarding the quasi-legislative power of the FREC? which FREC is, if you don't know, Florida Real Estate Commission. The wrong answer I selected was quasi-legislative power is not a power that FREC has, which was wrong, gives, so quasi-legislative power gives FREC authority to make a rules and enhance the law. That was a correct answer. Now, uh, in explanation, it says quasi-judicial power gives FREC administrative power to suspend, revoke, or fine, while quasi-legislative power gives FREC authority to make rules which follow the statute and govern the acts of licensees. Now, this is important and in California is a little different. I mean, I don't recall any uh, governmental body to have quasi powers. I guess that's kind of in a framework of those organizations. That's what it means. But pretty much I was wrong because I thought that it, they, they don't have this kind of power, but it appeared that not only they do, but also they can, you know, make rules and enhance the law. Up to the next question. If the loan value is high, the party most at the risk for the loss when a property is financed is, I chose a mortgage jar, but it was lender. The loan value, LTV, that's what they call it, is a ratio that represents the amount of the loan in relation to the sales price. For example, 90% LTV means that the borrower has 10% the price in form of cash down payment and the lender loans 90% of the purchase price. The higher the ratio, the more the lender is at risk for the borrower to default. Now, this is something obvious and I would probably have to choose the right answer. I don't know why I got with a mortgage art, but that was clearly the wrong answer. Up to the next one, guys. When a homeowner is delinquent on the property taxes, the first step taken by the government is correct and delayed payment is I choose the properties foreclosed by the holder of the tax certificate. But the right answer was the delinquent taxpayer names are published in the local paper, which is really interesting because again, I don't recall nothing like that in California. Normally what happens is the property is being foreclosed. I mean, it's just a matter of time, but of course that's what ends up happening. Uh, later on, there's an explanation. Property taxes are delinquent on April 1st of the year 
following non-payment. A list of delinquent payers is published in local countywide newspapers. Now we have kind of similar stuff, but that's pretty much means that the property goes to auction. Next question is Frick and DBPR, which is Department Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulations have a primary interest in real estate activity with a common goal of I chose wrongly establishing qualifications for the issuing a real estate license but it was wrong and the right answer was consumer protection. Now this is was something that I would not be able to find out without doing choosing wrong answer and uh, there is an explanation says the purpose of the department as it is called is to operate a consumer protection agency the purpose of frec is to protect the public now that's a really interesting approach another wrong question was when one owns condo the type of ownership that exists i chose none of all, but i was wrong the answer was fee simple interest with an undivided interest in a common elements and there's an explanation stating that condo ownership is a fee simple interest with a deed to the unit which is i think is the same here in california florida joint tenancy must be identified in this manner to show that it was purposeful and there is a weird jam of letters j t w r o s which means any joint tenancy formed in florida must be identified as joint tenancy with right of survivorship hmm. as the chosen form of the ownership between the parties interesting just to remember j t w r o s right of survivorship which appraisal approach to value would be the most sustainable to waterfront home with a high end model on a lot that cannot be dupli duplicated in the area with many other models and sales and i choose a market data or sales comparison approach actually that's the right answer market data and sales comparison approach but i chose the highest and the best use approach which was wrong apparently market data approach compares like property and makes adjustment based like properties on the data date of sale physical feature and location the income approach evaluates the income expenses where the cost approach is used to properties where the cost to duplicate can be calculated and there are no comparables in this case are like properties another question was a primary difference between the preventive maintenance performed by the apartment manager and routine maintenance is i chose the routine maintenance is expensive and preventive maintenance is not but that was apparently wrong the correct answer was routine maintenance involves regular task and preventive maintenance saves money or minimizes risk which was pretty much the same stuff but uh anyways and there is an explanation saying that routine maintenance is pruned on a regular basis oh yeah that, that's why I'm, i selected the wrong answer right so, so the maintenance is expensive which is that's not the case okay now this is a party that i don't understand at all i think they you, if you trade land you use those uh, terms terminology but uh, since i never traded land or never bought the land i'm not really another problem i have with this stuff is that i'm from originally from the europe and i'm not kind of used for these uh, square footage mileage stuff although i've been here almost a little more than 10 years still kind of foreign for me. So the question was the nw 1-4 of section 16 and northeast of 1-4 of the section 17 contain how many acres and the answer was a section contains 640 acres well wow, that's something to remember so one section is 640 acres why this is so weird when divided by 1.1-4 it means 160 acres so the word and in, in a legal description means that the parts of the sections are added together which is 160 plus 160 which makes 320 mm, that's explained which action might be considered abandoning a real estate property yeah failure to pay is uh, property taxes is pretty much you're abandoning your property that's the thing why i think that having the property paid off completely doesn't make sense because you still have to pay something you know you still end up paying the property taxes uh, which clause indeed defines the ownership taken by grantee and clarify the proposal of the deed and the correct answer is addendum clause uh, and i selected the wrong one which was the acknowledgement clause which was wrong because also known as to have and to hold habendum class to have and to hold that's what it means this is a clause that describes the rights of being transferred exceptions 
and the reservations are included in the clouds hmm, interesting so something to memorize so that's also something to remember this question comes in the different forms but it pretty much means the same when you're selling your house that's considered a credit to the seller and debit to the buyer pretty much credit which is a person who pays and debit uh, person who receives the payment so there is a thing called real estate recovery fund and one of the questions was for what they would never pay i selected their broker's dishonest dealing but what that was wrong pretty much they pay for their broker's mistakes i think there is insurance for that brokers are charged monthly there are legal fees or punitive damages which is interesting that's what they would never pay for legal fees so there was a question about the title in the real estate which of the following is correct about the term title and i'll just read the right answer which was the term title is concept referencing the rights of associated with the ownership very interesting question so the property is located next to the busy freeway semi trucks use the freeway all night long after two years on the market the seller reduced price by 25 percent which loss of the value has occurred i was under the impression that it was incurable physical obsolescence but pretty much the right answer was economic and ex or external obsolescence which means economic or external obsolescence is a loss of value outside of perimeter boundary of the property so if there is some kind of weird stuff going on around the property that's called economic or external obsolescence beyond owner's control that's another thing almost always incurable so that's the thing guys you have to be very very careful when you're buying your property you know, even if you're buying the property that is not super close but a little bit close to the main roads that could be a thing you have to double check triple check sometimes another question so it was uh, personal property is being transferred with a sale which document transfers to pri personal property i selected the real estate purchase agreement but that was wrong the bill of sale and there's a breakdown here the lenders do not like personal property transferred as part of purchase agreement it's hard to assign the value and maybe tax separately in general it's better to transfer personal items by separate bill of sale another question was the freight members on the probate cost panel act as i selected judge and jury but it was grand jury so two freight members one of which is a licensee must determine within 30 days if a law or rule violation has occurred they do not establish guilt or innocence the uh, taxes or the insurance are often prepaid at closing to establish the escrow account on which page of the closing disclosure form will you will the buyer see an accounting of escrow account set up and the right answer is page two under the other costs hmm interesting i was under impression it's on the page one because in california i believe that's at the end you know in the purchase agreement there's first page you know some disclosures and then there's a page with everything